Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger. No matter what your business is, no matter what you do, there's an element of media and everything you need to do to succeed, to grow your brand, to achieve your goals in business and in life. This is a new stage, and it's a very exciting new stage. I had several calls today with people who are just beginning to understand they have a stage. And their eyes were lighting up with the idea, I have a stage, now I get to use that stage. Really exciting to have that be a part of what is happening in our world today and helping people do this. So tonight, we're going to have a special episode, again, the first of two on the topic of TikTok. And let me ask you, are you a TikToker? Melissa Hughes is a TikTok influencer, international speaker, and best-selling author. She has booked twice on the Kelly Clarkson show. She's up on me on that. I haven't done that yet. Featured in the New York Times bestseller with the Primal Scream on NBC. She has over 225,000 followers on TikTok with over 900 likes. She is also the best-selling author of the book, She Can Laugh Along, with a child's book called Mommy Loves You Win. She's also done missionary work in the UK for several years with her husband and two children. Welcome to the stage tonight, our wonderful guest, Melissa Hughes. Good to see oh, you tonight, Melissa. So excited to be here. This is awesome. <laughs> How in the world did you get into TikTok? Well, that is an amazing, interesting question. I never in a million years would have thought that this is where I would be. But um, in 2020, like most people, I lost my job and was really looking to figure out what I might do with the rest of my life as far as a career. And I ended up in... Um, January of 2021, really feeling like after praying about it and everything, really feeling it impressed on my heart that I should go on social media and just start posting videos. And it was kind of out of left field and really, but really felt like God was leading me to do this. And so I ended up talking to my husband about it and said, I feel like I should go on social media and post videos. He said, about what? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, well, Let's just like pray about it. I mean, literally prayed, God, if this is something Melissa should give her time to, just make it clear. And then five days later, I uploaded a video of my kids sledding onto this platform I'd kind of heard of called TikTok. And that video generated 22 million views. And I ended up on the Kelly Clarkson show. So we felt like that was confirmation. <laughs> How many views for one video? Yeah, 22 million views. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you literally were an instant overnight, boom. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. It was a, a very um, overwhelming. It, and I, that's not really, it wasn't my world or I didn't know anything about it. So having all that media attention, like we got a lawyer because I, I had people wanting to license the video and people were throwing around terms I didn't know. And I, it was, it was wild. So as a fellow believer, uh, I, I think that's great. I'm just, just going to add this in there that, again, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things just drop in our lap and you have to step into the moment. And I love dreamers. I love entrepreneurs. I love people that blend their faith into their business and their business and their faith. And to, to me, it's great to, to see you just step up. And again, you didn't really know what TikTok was. No. Because there's a hundred different platforms out there you could have picked up that are well-established, well-respected but you chose TikTok. How did you get to the point of really saying, I need to embrace, because TikTok's got a lot of stupid and kind of yeah. racist stuff there. How did you pick that one and say, this is where I'm going to plant my flag? Well, I mean, that was where like the video took off. And so, because I like, again, I, the only reason why I posted on there was because I was like, oh, this is like a video platform. And I honestly was posting just to figure out how you even use, like how you even post a video because I felt like so strongly that I should be doing something with video on social media. Um, so yeah, after that video got that attention, I thought, well, I guess I should try to learn TikTok. <laughs> so, and, and, and TikTok is fun. Now, some of my backstory, I've kind of alluded to it here on the show every so often. 
I thought TikTok would be a bust, honestly. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go try this thing. I'm going to do some of these serious, some of my coaching, some of my tips. I was ahead of the curve is what I found out because now people are, are doing this and doing it very well. Yeah. But I tried to do it. And after a while, I got stuck in like everyone else. You're scrolling through, seeing people doing funny stuff and dog videos. And I started to lip sync and have fun. And I was getting the clicks and the likes, but it, it wasn't helping my business. Mm. But it was lots of fun. Mm. Now people are tuning into business. People have made the turn from it's not just fun. This is here to stay and this short content works, right? Oh, it does. I have so many stories. Um, one of actually the first time I tried to like figure out how you could sell from the platform. Um, a friend of mine, he owns a, a children's publishing company. He actually made a TikTok or a children's book out of one of my TikToks. Yeah. And he, I was like, let's figure out how maybe we can even sell from TikTok. Like, does it even work? So I did a review of one of his books, which is um, Lucas, the dinosaur entrepreneur and how like to teach, you know, entrepreneurship to children. That video went viral, got like 90,000 hits and he sold 300 copies of his kid's book in three days and became an Amazon bestseller. And can you imagine what 300 sales for someone's business, you know, depending on what you do, how that could transform your business. Oh yeah, no, right out of the shoot. That's incredible. That's part of the new media reach. I'm trying to coach people to help them understand this is a tool you must learn now, whether it's TikTok, yes. Facebook, but you have to have the camera on and you have to engage through video now, don't you? You do. You, you got it, Rich. I mean, if your plan, and I say this to people, but if your plan is to continue posting static images on social media, you're just going to be left behind. So what makes an influencer an influence? Because there's numbers, okay? There's fans, there's followers, mm -hmm. there's influencers. Can you break down what the standards are to rate yourself as a fan, a follower, or an influencer? I got to be honest. It's the Wild West. <laughs> it's such a new industry um, that people are really like this, even like for standards for brand deals or for what people charge for an audience, like it really is the Wild West. And especially on TikTok, because that platform is so new, you know, people are really kind of just throwing numbers out and seeing what works and figuring it out. But um, as far as like a follower, you know, it would be somebody that loves your content that wants to follow what you're offering and an influencer that could really range from, you know, a couple thousand to millions of followers. It depends. I think everyone has a level of influence, don't they? Well, you have 225,000 followers, mm -hmm. 9 million likes. Mm -hmm. When you throw those numbers out, and this was kind of a lark, an accident, a, a yeah. blessing. Yeah. What do you do with those numbers when you look at you and go, that's me? I'm shocked. <laughs> do you know what's crazy as well? People, I, I tell this as well, because after that video went viral, um, I was working a job. I was actually working in my kid's daycare because I had lost my job during COVID, but still needed to work. So on my lunch breaks, I would post my, I would record my TikToks in my car on my lunch break. And that is how I grew my account. I wasn't dancing. I didn't have special equipment. I literally was in my car um, recording that stuff because people just want the content. Well, and I've seen nurses, uh, Everyone, I'm, I've seen police officers do the car video. Yeah. And it's like, you're on the job and you're, hi, everybody. It's me, Officer yeah. Bob. And I'm thinking, whoever thought a cop would be doing a TikTok in his squad yeah. car, right? People love it. They just love the fact that it's like, it's, you're in your real everyday life. I think to be completely transparent, it seems like, um, especially Gen Z is just so done with like the curated, overly polished, just two perfect professional images that was really trending a couple of years ago on social media. It's like, it's not real. Everybody knows it's not Instagram. It's filtered, perfectly polished. Let me put another filter on it, Graham. You know, it's not instant anymore. <laughs> what are some of the changes you've seen with your time on the platform? Because even when I first got on, there was now, well, when, when it first began, it was all short, short content. You can now go up to three minutes now for TikTok? They've actually rolled out 10 minute videos, which, you know, is really saying something as far as like how they're going to be competing with YouTube. You know, that's a huge platform. Um, 
but the platform has changed a lot. You know, even, um, I feel like a year ago, the culture of it has changed in the sense of more businesses are hopping on and the competition, like people are realizing, Oh, this isn't going away. So it's becoming more saturated. And there, there was more of like that early adopter phase, even yeah. like a year ago, two years ago, and that's starting to go away now. So, um, the opportunity for that organic reach and that organic growth is going down. So you really want to hop on quickly. Again, the early adapters blew it wide open. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got a very good friend, very dear friend. He's a trucker and he does the lip sync in videos and they love seeing them. They, they, they yeah. can't wait for it. So the humor side is still there, but there is okay. a shift to the professional side. Talk to us about that shift. Is it, becoming almost a channel within the sub channels or is it still your own business channel or, or are they breaking into subgroups now? Yeah, I feel like the two ways to really grow on the platform is you either educate or you entertain. If you can edutain, that's even better. But for businesses, you know, it's people that are turning up and offering their story, their product and their service. And I do feel like as far as like those niches and people getting really niche specific, that is happening you know, and it almost feels like you do need to, you either need to be very niche specific because really with TikTok, if something works, you should do it again, right? So if, if your audience likes you talking about a topic, you know, and you're, that's in your industry, you should repeat it so you can continue to give your audience the content that they're looking for and that they're searching for. But yeah, for businesses, it's a huge opportunity right now. Like when I, when I was first on it, again, it's changing to more. I, I open and admit that everybody, uh, but when it was like, just do the video. Now I was just doing videos, stand up talks, but you can do transition swipes. You can add embedded codes. It's really grown to be an endless interactive tool too, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of features on TikTok that I think the other platforms don't have, but like the main one which is an incredible marketing tool is the home page acts like a discovery page. So it's called the for you page. Whereas obviously on every other platform, and I know this is even changing now, but before on other platforms, you would only see the people that you're following. Yeah. So you could have amazing content. And this is probably the frustration for businesses, right? It's like, I'm putting out content, I'm putting out my best content. Well, it's not really getting seen because unless you are putting ad money behind it uh, and people, if people aren't following you, they're not going to see it. Whereas for TikTok, that homepage acts like a discovery page. So you're constantly getting new faces, new people, and you're able to get your content pushed out if it's good. What about hashtags and at signs and all that stuff that's so good on LinkedIn and other places? Yeah. Is, is that important to learn that for TikTok? Yeah. I think that to be honest with you, um, as far as hashtags, there is a strategy and that they are important, but at the end of the day, the most important thing on TikTok is your watch time. And so if you can create content that's engaging and that really hits those pain points of your target audience, at the end of the day, your video is going to perform. Like, yes, you can always, you know, have um, that hashtag strategy. You can mention people, you can do those tips and tricks, but I really do feel like it right now, people just want the content. And depending on how you deliver it and how, and you know this, Rich, not everybody is great on video. So. Sorry, that's true. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> we can go home now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So when it comes to 10 minutes, to me with the, tech, the, with the TikTok community as it's been, 10 minutes seems really long for this platform. Do you think yeah. they're pushing it too far? <sighs> Put her on the It'll spot. She's an influencer. Come on. Yeah, no, it'll be an interesting one because, you know, I think that right now the videos have been between like seven seconds and a minute. Yeah. That's really short. So to me, like, kind of, like I said earlier, I think that they're really trying to compete with YouTube and being able to create like people that have built a platform on TikTok. They don't want people to then go to the YouTube channel. They want this to be the video platform. TikTok wants to keep people on TikTok. Yeah. And there is like, there is a place for long form content, even 10 minutes. I know on YouTube, it can be an hour, right? But on TikTok, that is long form. 
Um, so yeah, I think that it'll be interesting to see how that evolves um, and what creators are going to do with that. Now, for, for those of you that might not be aware of it, that haven't played on TikTok too much, there is a threshold to get to TikTok lives where mm -hmm. you can break it and actually have a live event. Now, when I was in there regularly for a while, pandemic was streaming. So literally you have somebody with their camera in their kitchen with the fireplace going and hi, nice to see you, Susie. Nice to see you. And it wasn't anything of live value. It was just human connection. Yeah. What's the value of getting to that live and what can you really do with that live? And what's the magic number, the crack it to get in there? I believe it's 10,000 followers. You need 10,000. I think you need a thought for a creator account. You need a thousand to be able to put a link in your bio. And I honestly, I probably would need to check myself, but I believe you need 10,000 followers to go live. Um, and as far as like how that, like it really does create that human connection. So because TikTok is a short form platform, being able to hop on a live and people actually like, it's not these short bits. It's like really engaging with your audience. It's an excellent way to grow community and really get to have people see you in a, in a closer, more intimate setting. I got a question already from the gallery here tonight. Can okay. you put a link in for your viral video? Oh, they they, yeah. they want to see your viral video. So if you have that easily available some tonight as we're doing the show, please drop it in for our live okay. audience tonight. They would love to see that. Yeah, because that magic number of doing these live events, you can do a show, you can do a discussion, but it's still, you're the primary video and the rest is all through chat box, correct? There's still no interplay yet on TikTok. You can, so like some, you can invite somebody to go live with you. So ah. like it, so if they're, if one of your followers, like you, they can either send you an invitation or you can like have them come on the live with you. And it, so that is a way I got to be honest with you. I have never allowed, never allowed one of my followers to come on with me because I've been told that you should never give someone the microphone unless you really know them because you never know what they're going to say. Uh, that is true. I, I, I can give you a testimonies <laughs> on that. Yes. You, you want to definitely vet and make sure yeah. that they're on the same track you are. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it could totally derail you know, and I know you could kick them off and stuff, but I'm really big too. Like if you follow me on there, I'm really big on keeping it positive. So like even dealing with negative comments, I've had, I've had the haters come out to play and, you know, you really do have to have thick skin in the social media world. Um, and I'm just really big on, if you get a negative comment, it's important to me that you either ignore it. Like it's not a place to defend like either yeah. scroll past or like just get over it well i i i do know some people that did lives and they had a moderator so the the host would make just be doing this the moderator was the one making sure you didn't have the bad content you didn't have the trash remarks how important is that as you grow to make sure you have someone behind the scenes doing that for you is that one of those mission critical things or can you do that yourself effectively I think that it depends on the person. I mean, this is my personal opinion. Um, people like, because TikTok is so, it goes global. You get, you get, you know, wild comments. Like even on my lives, like I'll get people coming in just saying the most random things. And I think how you can either ignore it, you can make a joke out of it or just move on, you know, like, um, so anyway, you can, it depends, I think as far as like how you, how comfortable you feel with those comments, you could have a moderator, but. I've been doing media and TV and everything for my entire life, uh, 30 plus years. And wow. even for me, it's a weird duck to figure out. It's just been strange to know how the vet, now I'm not afraid of the camera. I'm not afraid of the content, the short content. It's just weird to figure out how it flows. So what makes you successful on there? What, what's the secret sauce? Okay. I love this story because when, um, when I started, when my video took off, I was like, Oh wow. Like I need to figure this out. So I was trying to figure it out. And I remember going on there and, um, I've always been told I've been good in front of the camera, but when I went on TikTok and I was trying to like make my own content, my videos weren't doing very well. And I remember talking to my husband and he's such a straight shooter. Like he's fantastic. And I love him for this, but I was, I was talking to him one day and he was like, um, how you doing? I was like, oh, I don't know. My videos just aren't performing well. And I don't know why. 
feel like my content is good. And he looks at me and he goes, well, I'll tell you why. He goes, your content sucks. <laughs> and I was like, it does it? And he was like, yeah. And it was a, it was a backhanded compliment, but he was just like, you're talking to the camera, like you're performing. You need to talk to the camera. Like you're talking to your best friend. You've got such a great personality. Like you need to have that come through. And so I think like people, especially business owners, Rich, they struggle with this because they're so mm. used to coming on camera and being professional. It doesn't work. It doesn't work on TikTok. So there's that element where you really do need to talk to the camera. Like you're talking to your best friend, but also when you go on, you need to say, you need to have, you have like three to five seconds to hook someone. So how you hook them in and then retain that engagement and retain, like, it's an art. It's an art. Okay. You get bonus points. You, you home run two, two great <laughs> things that I talk about. You must be authentic here. You must be real. And it is like having a cup of coffee with your best friend. It's like yeah. sitting down and having a bowl of popcorn and talking and having a good time. That's where you come alive to the camera. Mm -hmm. I play, I joke, I tease. And it's just one thing that I've naturally always done. But through the camera, you don't want me reading the nightly news. No. I'm either going to cry, get angry, or I'm going to crack a joke that's really inappropriate in the moment. Yeah. I, I just can't do it. So you're right. It is the personality, but your natural personality that people really want to get to. Yeah. And people struggle with that. The moment the camera comes on, they're like, <laughs> yeah, hi, nice yeah. to meet you, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. It's all downhill from there. What yeah. are some of those other things you can give us as some tips to help people get confident, get on? Because it is, you need the selfie stick. You need this, do that. But that's all gadgets. What, what are the real things they need to have to be confident and mm -hmm. succeed on TikTok? Yeah. So one of the things that I would really encourage people to do, you know, that one of the most the one of the most important things is if you're going to go on, you cannot be inconsistent. You have got to treat this like a business. This can't be, oh, I'm going to post today and not tomorrow. It's like, no, you need, you need to pick a schedule, which I would recommend, hate to say it every, every day or like at least five times a week. And being able to come up with that content because you are on camera, nobody wants to have to come on camera every day. So if you can like block out maybe on a Monday for two hours where you're like, right, I'm going to get in the zone, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to share my heart, like share content that sets your soul on fire. And if you struggle to do that, have coffee with a friend who you like, you guys really like you talk and it comes out of you and it comes out of them. And you're like, yeah, and this, and this, whatever, like whatever gets you into that, like passionate zone then record your content. So you're full of ideas. You're on the overflow and that energy comes through on camera. And then you just save those. Literally you can record five TikToks in an hour, right? You just record it in the app. You don't need any fancy equipment. Do it in your car. Like I did record it, save them as drafts. Now you have five pieces of content for you, for your week. And it needs to be content that either educates or entertains. If you're not that funny, like me, then educate. <laughs> if you so. love the lip sync, there's plenty of killer songs. I have a mean air guitar. You can find videos, believe me. But yeah, pick your area and do it. But, but that regular basis. But I like the idea you said of literally sit down and pour it out of you. Get it on tape really good. And then do drafts. So you can make an individual segment. That, that's a great, simple flow plan that anyone can really follow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I find people like, if you're really busy and you've got a business and you're working with clients, you're not in that space to be creative or to share, but if you can block out a time once a week where like, it's time to, for you to really show up and be present and give energy to that. I find that to be really helpful and being able to have something that ignites that passion, whatever it is before you get on camera so that you you're ready to share. Do you have a cheat sheet then you keep track of your topics and what's come out so you don't repeat too soon? There's nothing wrong with repeating everybody. There's nothing wrong with that. But do you have a way to make sure you don't double up too fast? So actually what I do, this is like, this is the Melissa way. Okay. I, um, because what I talk about is motherhood. So that's kind of like in my thing, but I have a section on my phone, a notes where just as I go about my week, 
if I like looking through my life, if I think of an idea, I just put it in my notes. I'll be like, oh, that would be a good TikTok. Or if I'm talking to a friend and a topic comes up, like, oh, that would actually be a good topic to talk about on TikTok. Cause you, I'm interacting with my target audience. Yeah. I'm interacting with other moms. So they're like, you know, saying, yeah, I didn't get any sleep last night and the baby was up all night. Okay. That's an, that's a problem. So you, I keep like an ongoing list. And so that yeah. when I go to record, you know, I have some ideas already that are fresh. Um, and then as far as repeating, because TikTok, the videos go out as singles. Yeah. If a video goes viral, I would honestly recommend you repeat, like repurpose that idea. You can share it in a different way. Repurpose that idea and share it again. Because obviously it's working. Uh, okay. I'm going to drop in here. Here is the social links for Melissa Hughes. What's the best way to get a hold of you? I'm going to be surprised if you give me any other answer than TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My name on TikTok is Melissa Lee Hughes and it's L-E-A, my middle name. So just my full name. And then um, you can email me at Melissa at Melissa Lee Hughes.com or you can visit my website, Melissa Lee Hughes.com. It's the same Instagram, Melissa Lee Hughes. Thank you, Melissa, very much. And always, if you need any media coaching and training, to better interview, to better present, to better answer interview questions or whatever you need you do to get more media savvy, reach out to me, rich at richbontrager.net or visit howtorockthestage.com.